Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome back to my House of Iron 4 challenges, this time with Waking the Tiger DLC. And you have challenged me to play as Manchuko and to recreate uh, the Qing Empire, I think it's pronounced Qing, uh, to retake the Mandate of Heaven and take China. We're going to be playing on regular difficulty in Iron Man mode and with historical focuses. Uh, let's go! Yeah, I've been testing it a bit. And, of course, the main difficulty is that we start as a puppet of the Japanese, and we have to get out of that. As for taking China and recreating uh, our empire, I don't know much about uh, Chinese history, so I wouldn't be able to tell you how far we should uh, take our borders. So we're going to rely on this focus claim, the Mandate of Heaven. The focuses that lead up to this will uh, give us cores in everything we need, and then when we can do that one, I will, I will assume that we have completed uh, the challenge. No other requirements really. We of course have a new focus tree as uh, many Chinese nations do. We have this branch which is mm, about us and being puppet of the Japanese and we have this big branch which is a general Chinese one. It even has a focus that has a small chance of just making Japan your puppet. We're going to have to start with pacifying the countryside because we have bandits and in order to deal with the bandits we can do one of two things we have to go to the decisions tab and we can maintain armies in the regions with bandits or we can just spend some equipment and manpower to uh, deal with the bandits and that also gives us army experience i would really like that army experience so that's what i'm going to do even though we'll have to waste some infantry equipment on that so let's disband all our troops and thus we'll get the equipment to do those decisions. Start researching electromechanical engineering and a doctrine. Now, normally I am a proponent of Superior 5, I believe this is the best doctrine, unless you have the industry to go all motorized. Um, but this time we're gonna do mass assault. Just to mix things up a bit. Also it will fit, because we'll have tons and tons of manpower. Uh, right, that is about it, let's unpause. See what the Japanese are doing. Purge the Kodoa faction. Yeah, they do have a new tree. And the most important one thing uh, here for us is the Manchurian project, which lets the Japanese uh, develop our country. I would love that. Now, our focus tree gives us two paths, obedience and assertiveness. Obedience just makes us a good puppet and gives us some bonuses, and then we can eventually break free through cooperation with the Japanese, and this one, assertiveness, leads to an independence war. We'll be following uh, this one, but not immediately. We have to wait for the perfect moment to make this effective. We have finished our pacify the countryside focus. Uh, the next one, as we are going for assertiveness, has to be the trade delegation. And we have to do this one quickly, everything but the independence war, in order to get some stability and war support, which are new things, new additions, and they are very important. We can do the decisions now that uh, regard the bandits. Now, I've been testing this, so there's a little bit of a bug, I think. If I take them all simultaneously, uh, I will only get 10 experience total. And if I unpause for a day between taking them, I will get a 30 experience total, which is the way it should be. We're just going to train a ton of regular width 3 infantry. Tons of it. That the independence war decision uh, in itself gives us a ton of infantry equipment. If we have them in the field even untrained and unequipped, uh, they will receive equipment almost immediately. Which is why I'm going to be deploying my guys uh, ahead of time. I could use a cavalry unit in order to take over Korea quickly. We also have enough political power to modify our government, and the first thing I'm going to do is free trade. Another important thing we have to pay attention to is the commanders and the new uh, chain of command system. I'm not yet sure if I like it, I'll have to spend some more time on that, um, but we can promote a commander, we'll need a field marshal or two. The nice thing about mass assault is that you can deploy them ahead of time uh, much sooner. We can now raise our autonomy, which is a good thing. Yeah, right, five equal peoples, and I will join the anti commandant pact. Partial mobilization. There we go. Also, keep deploying units ahead of time. We need tons of them in the field. He can gain a lot of nice skills later on, but for now let's just give him offensive doctrine. And perhaps, what do we want? Charismatic or organization? That's reinforce rate, that's recovery rate. Uh, let's do charismatic. Bolster nationalism. Alright, uh, purge the general affairs council. 
Infantry Equipment, one. Purge the General Affairs Council. Nice. Also, we have joined an alliance with the Japanese, which means uh, the next focus they're gonna do is an attack on China, most probably. And now we could do the independence war, but we don't want to. Not yet. Now we're going to focus on expanding the strength of our country, expanding its stability and the number of factories, and getting some other bonuses. Japan is attacking China, and we're going to ignore that completely. Strikes. Right, now when you're at war, uh, you get some new events. Uh, this will cost us political power to deal with, but we can get a good outcome or a bad outcome. I am going with the... there's a cheap option, that will make it happen again. Uh, there's a slightly expensive option, and there's a very expensive option. I am going to do the very expensive option, because it offers the better outcome, probably. Ah, that is the good outcome of the event. We got extra stability. Nice. Mutineers in the army. God damn it. Okay, um, hold a patriotic speech before the mutineers. Let's do that one. God damn it. Same event again. <sighs> yeah, we'll end up with no political power. That reminds me of Kaiserreich, and actually one of the aspects of Kaiserreich I didn't like very much, which was that you got hit with bad events all the time. Draft dodge again, really? <sighs> Draft reform proves effective, yes, but at what cost? All the political power gone. They wanted to hire some more advisors. Half a million field manpower and we're still on volunteer only. In the meantime, exercising everyone. My political power is pathetic. Oh, nice, wonderful, strikes. I haven't gotten enough political power to modify my country in over a year. Which is um, very upsetting. Where's my manpower coming from? I didn't... Oh, five people armies is giving me extra manpower. I didn't realize that. That's amazing. Our field marshal can handle up to five armies, 24 each. So that's these guys and this army is going to be a garrison army. Because once I take their ports and everything, I will need to maintain them as well. I'm going to steal Manguko. I have sent units to every single province owned by uh, uh, Manguko. Why? Well, because we will attack Japan, they'll call them in, and then we'll immediately take over their territory. Fortunately, we can't do that to Japan, because they are the one we're attacking, and that will just retreat our units into our territory. Um, but we will manage. Keep in mind, we'll also remain at war with the rest of China. So we have to account for that as well, and hopefully have success in both wars simultaneously. I think it might be time to attack the fate of Czechoslovakia. And we have given Falkenhausen citizenship. You know what, I think it's time. It's time we start. Independence war. Nationalist symbol, war support, stability, division attack on core territory, division defense on core territory. We have tons of modifiers to that. We should be fine. We should be fine. Now, uh, are we ready? Yes, mostly yes. I have deployed my units to every province owned by Menkuko. That will make them capitulate instantly once we attack Japan. Unfortunately, can't do that to Japan. And we have cavalry on the Korean border, which will, uh, who we will move in there immediately. Tons of manpower. Maybe I should have deployed more units. Mm, that is quite a lot. Oh, right. We are... We are... Doing it. See, immediately took all this territory, because they didn't have troops there, and we did. And we, if we, attack, if we did that to Japan, my troops would be sent back home. But Mankuka wasn't technically the target of attack, so we could do that. Now, how will we do in here is a different matter. Now, what I can do with the Field Marshal, let's cancel his order. Do a new front line against all our enemies and attack them simultaneously. But there is another thing we can do. We might be able to puppet some of them uh, through a focus, which we're going to select now. Well, not now, but in a moment. Le reclaim the empire and then offer vassalization. Some of them might choose to become our subjects and that will bolster our military strength very significantly. So now we reclaim the empire. Move these guys into the Japanese port. You get a commander and do a garrison order of the ports. And finally you, well, you will need a lot of manual orders. The manual orders are given. It should work out nicely. Although we'll see about that. 
Okay, go. Interesting. Germany is inviting me to the Axis, really? Well, yeah, sure, I will accept. Perhaps they'll send me some Lin Lee or something. I'm not going to call them in, but uh, I will accept. That is about us, so I'm going to read this one. Following a period of internal power struggles between the Japanese administrators and the government of Aizen Goropui, uh, the fight for supremacy in Manchuria has finally reached a boiling point. Reportedly, the confrontation was set off by an incident in the imperial household in which a Japanese general supposedly insulted the emperor of Manchukuo by demanding that he bow. Outraged, Aizen Goropui replied that the son of heaven does not bow and struck the general with his cane before ordering his military to remove all Japanese soldiers from Chinese soil immediately we will claim our destiny and the mandate of heaven okay we have taken the port good are we advancing here um slowly yes good take as much as you can before the japanese can bolster defense now i could use this army to bolster the main front but uh, i have to wait for the garrison armies to reach the port first otherwise we will not be able to maintain it all right, uh, I told them to garrison the whole from coastline. That is not smart. Just garrison the ports, but put a lot of troops in there. How's the cavalry attack going? Still no Japanese resistance. Yeah, they still haven't figured out we are fighting. This is why I needed cavalry. We need to cover Korea quickly. Perhaps I should have used cavalry everywhere, but we wouldn't get uh, those nice bonuses infantry gets. Perhaps I should have used mm, manual orders here as well. have ordered all my units to go there. And we have taken the port. Wonderful. Korea is ours. Why are you guys not moving? I'm beginning to think the garrison is going to screw everything up and let the Japanese into our ports. The Japanese have started defending, which is going to make this significantly more difficult. Ah, see, they're trying to attack us here. Good thing I actually left the army, because the garrison wouldn't be able to manage this. The garrison kind of sucks, apparently. I have reorganized the attack a little bit. We need to take this part also. Poland refuses German ultimatum, and we reclaim the empire. Now I'm going to offer vassalization to everyone, and perhaps we'll get some subjects. Now this will require some patience. And those garrison units are doing absolutely nothing. Damn it. They were supposed to put all those garrison troops in those ports. Is that so difficult to do? I told you to garrison the ports. Guard naval bases. Don't be idiots. Perhaps should have waited longer. China seems stronger than it should be. In two hours, we will complete the offer vassalization focus, which will send offers to Jiangxi Click. I think that's what how it's pronounced. I'm I'm guessing a lot of the pronunciation here. Yunnan, Jibei, Sanma, Xinjiang, and uh, Shangxi. They will all get the offer to become our subject. And I tried to dig around for this in the event files. I'm not sure I am correct, but I think they have a seventy percent chance of accepting each. Either that or it's 30. Anyway, at least one of them should accept. Let's see. Yeah, I slowed the game down to make sure to stop and talk before this happens. One submits, two submit, three submit. Okay, which three? Jibei, Sun Ma, Yunnan and uh, Guangxi. Perfect. Wonderful. Uh, Xinjiang might have been even better, but this is this is perfect. Okay. Why did I need this? Well, first of all, we have less enemies and more friends, and we get free puppets. But that is going to let me win this war very easily. Because what I'm going to do now is request all their forces. One. No, not land lease. Two. I'm not sure why they agreed to that. Maybe they saw I was winning. I also need to redo the front line here, because this is now our puppet, relying on the attack from the south quite heavily. Let's unpause and see the results of what just happened. Yeah, I put the southern armies on super aggressive, uh, because they should theoretically be able to catch the enemy unawares. Let's see if this extended front line and puppets actually change the course of the war. It was going pretty well, but now it should be going amazingly. If Xinjiang sent all their army to fight the Japanese, they feeling safe, well then we'll take everything easily. But um, I doubt that they probably left something to def defend their territory. Okay, okay, we're making gains, we're making gains. Um, although this isn't looking too good, is it? Let's say we have bribed the warlords to stab China in the back. 
and side with us. Sing Yang, how you doing? And I have taken their current capital. They are much closer to capitulation now. How long until you capitulate now? 5%! I was just complaining that the 10%, that was the minimum, was too low. And now it's gone up to 5, though going down to 5. Um, yeah. I agree with some of the changes, but that's not one of them. We have moved the capital. Now let's establish the Imperial University. Xinjiang has capitulated. I wonder how much influence we'll get at the peace conference. Seriously, the 5% requirement for capitulation is... is way overboard. Oh, damn it, they have landed. I knew the garrison was not to be trusted. I don't know, something was changed with the garrison AI. And now it distributes those units... I don't know, like... See, these guys are just sitting here, doing nothing, and they're in the garrison order. Meanwhile, the garrisons were not strong enough to repel enemy invasions. Perhaps I got a bit careless and let the Japanese retake too much, but I blame... I blame the garrison. See? They're only sending three units here. Instead of distributing all they have evenly. The rest are just sitting here doing nothing. 19.2. There we go. We have the manpower. We don't have the guns, but we do have the manpower. Perhaps... Perhaps they'll do well. Just throw sticks and stones, you know. Can I sneak in to the communist China's capital? <laughs> looks like I can. I mean, I'm not saying I can, but it certainly looks like it. There's no defense there. Communist China and Japan have signed a white peace. That's strange. Whoa. How am I not at war with communist China anymore? How can... Japan sign a peace deal for me regarding communist China. My choice is over. Mao? Hey, hey, why can't I justify a war goal on you? God damn it. Maybe once we're done with China, China, we can kill communist China. I need a lot more guns, making 300 a day, and it's still not enough. Oh, from that we can finally get a war goal against communist China. We could do that, or we could do imperial legacy which could give us uh, Japan as a puppet, eventually, if we're at peace with them. Uh, because there's an event that can let us sign a sort of a white peace once we push them out of mainland China. Um, I suppose I'll do one China policy, because that communist China is a problem for me. We'll still win this, but I'm so disappointed with the garrison. One China policy is done, I'm going to immediately declare war in communist China, because I'm still angry that I am no longer at war with communist China. And I'm going to just give everyone a manual order to take their capital, which should make them... Communist uprising, what? Do I even have any communists? Let's ban all communism. Okay, let's do an anti-communist sweep. sweep. Let's integrate Tibet. Perhaps we'll get a free vassal. Okay, that's a peace deal with communist China. Mm, I'm just going to annex everything. Then I'll leave some units to guard. This time manually, I don't trust the garrison anymore. And I don't think I will ever trust the garrison again. There is an event that when I push them out of mainland China, they will offer peace. I think the details depend on uh, whether they control any territory. So maybe it is better if I, you know, push them out completely before that happens. Oh, did I already mention that the new garrisons suck? Tibet has refused to be our subject. Well, I can attack them, uh, but it's not the time for that. Maybe I need to give it more time, but I don't think I'm a fan of the new system seems to not, you know, to be less foolproof, and I like my systems to be foolproof, so I don't have to control everything. I think the war goals, do they expire? Let's have a look at the one we have against Tibet. It will expire, they do expire, but after a long time. Japanese, uh, Japan offers peace. Japan releases Korea, becomes owner and controller of Taiwan. South Korea, North Korea, East Tabai, uh, right? We get everything else. Peace with Japan. Japan gets event. Qing China accepts peace. I would like to accept peace, but I, I'm not sure. If I understand the event correctly, because I, I, I had a look at it at the event files, um, we would own everything they don't control. Okay, how long until this expires? Because I'd like to push them out of here. 11 days. I'm not sure that that's enough. I mean, so, oh, I will accept this, just 
hoping to push them out of here a bit more. The war has been won. Let's see what happens. They maintained the territory they had here, and Korea has been released. Korea has been released. I can justify war on Korea. On sad Korea or on happy Korea. Uh, and as I am at war with the great powers still, I will be able to do it quickly. Let's get Korea. So now, what is our war participation? 13% war participation. Japan has 72. Even though I hold all the stuff. Why is that? Occupation, 3,000, bombing, 1,000. Occupation, th 300, what? Maybe I shouldn't have signed a peace with the Japanese. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see the peace conference about uh, China in a moment. I have to make sure to not let take the Japanese, mm, to not let the Japanese take too much. Let's do shadow puppeting. Uh, we'll see if it still works. Uh, yeah, clear everything. Mm, do you remember what shadow puppeting is? We... We puppet everyone. No, no, not like that. Take all states. Take all states. Take all states. Right, we can't, of course, we can't send this deal. But now we puppet. And that puppets them with zero and satellite. And uh, that puppets them with zero provinces. And then we untake all states. Can't do that to China, apparently, so I'm gonna have to do that manually. And this way, I won't be able to puppet them because they will have no, you know, no provinces. So the puppeting won't come through. However, the enemy won't be able to puppet them as either. Uh, well, I say the enemy, the other war participant. And they have taken three provinces so far. And I think I can prevent them from taking anything else because I have, you know, cut them off like this. Yeah, and they've taken Shanghai. I'll just attack them again and take this back. Let's end the turn. Let's end the conference. But Japan has bits that I need. There's two things we can do now. We can attack them, or we can maybe puppet them diplomatically. If we get very lucky, I think there's a 20% chance of acceptance in that event. I'm not sure. I'll try that. In the meantime, I'll conquer Korea, because I can. I reorganized my armies a bit, started building stuff in my puppet's territory to lower their autonomy, and switched my production to the newest infantry equipment, because now we can afford to do that. I also noticed that Tibet is guaranteed by France, and Korea is a democratic, which is actually bad for us. Why? Well, because it's very likely that they would join the Allies right now if we attacked them, because, you know, democratic and we are part of the Axis. I could I could exit the Axis, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna cancel this justification. We don't need Korea for the challenge, neither do we need Tibet, so we're gonna leave that alone. Sending them over here to Japan in case they refuse our generous offer. Let's do dominate Japan. Either way, we win because it will either give us Japan as a puppet, which we will later integrate, or it will give us a Cassus Belly on Japan, or rather a war goal. On Japan. Both are good. Yeah, you'd be super aggressive and beat up Japan. Then we can get our focus. In the meantime, once you're done resupplying my troops with those guns, I'm going to be sending them as land lease. Jap Seriously? Okay? <laughs> okay, uh. I don't know if I'm extremely lucky or if the algorithm actually takes into account uh, our relative army strength. Uh, I don't know this new update that well yet. Uh, whatever the case, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Japan, for <laughs> becoming my puppet. Well, now we control everything we need to control. or And we still just need to annex the puppets and then we can do the other stuff. Should we start with Japan? We should probably start with Japan, because they have the most uh, factories and things. Start land lease. Guns. 100%. Go. 100% of our gun production is going to Japan. That's a lot of gun production. Yeah, I'm just going to mm, gather up this political power because we will need it to annex them. So no more focuses for us unless it's the Mandate of Heaven. Switzerland joined allies. That is not our problem. We have our own world here. A few more deliveries and they will be annexed. <laughs> this is hilarious. We could just do a focus. For the whole of Japan. 
To be fair though, even if they refused, we have beaten them already and I could easily beat them again here and we don't need to land uh, on the home islands because the focus doesn't require that territory, it only requires the Chinese territory. So we could just do that. Almost a thousand guns a day. Oh, going to Japan. We're also getting 25% of their civilian industry and 65% of their military industry. Well, soon we're going to get 100%. I was curious about the focus that made us puppet Japan just like that, so I opened up one of my test games. Uh, you know I'm doing non Ironman test games uh, for my strategies before I record, uh, so I have a strategy planned. Um, so I opened up one of those, which was at the point where I could do the focus and I was at peace with Japan, and I tried it five times, and out of those five times, twice they accepted being a puppet. So, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the strength of the army? Or maybe I'm just very lucky. And we can annex Japan. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, they haven't fixed it. It still says it costs 15, but it still costs 300. Well, anyway, we just annexed Japan. <laughs> Okay, this is this is nice. This is nice. Did I get all the guns? Seems like I did. Yes. So we can now send them to our other puppets. No, not one million. I don't have one million. One hundred thousand guns per month, please. Yay for lend lease. And then we'll get those guns back when we annex them, and we can send them to another subject. They have been transported, correct? Yes. Now we can annex. Let's annex. Did I get the guns back? Yes, I did. Let's send them out again. We have 200,000 of the newest guns. Let's just send them all in one batch, because why the hell not? Start lend -lease. Guns, best guns. Number 200,000. Delivery commencing. Annexation commencing. Yunnan Free Empire has been annexed. Now, you guys. 200,000. Once. Send. Has the delivery been completed? Yes, it has. Well then. And now we can do the focus, can't we? Yes, claim the mandate of heaven. Let's do that. Switch to the Chinese Empire. And the goal will have been achieved. The focus is about to finish. And that will be the end of this challenge. Claim the mandate of heaven. Chinese Empire. And he got the new dress. Oh, his, and a new name. But he lost his special abilities. Hmm, strange. But we also did lose uh, the uh, low legitimacy modifier. Anyway, yay! We're now a Chinese empire. We have successfully united China under uh, the Manchurian Qing dynasty. Okay. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to let me know in the comments what you liked or disliked about my strategy, and most importantly, make sure to suggest new challenges in the comments and vote on the ones you like. One more thing I want to mention before I end the video. Usually, when I'm preparing to film those challenges, I test my strategies in non Ironman games. Lately, I've been wondering if it would be good to stream those preparations, or at least some of them. So um, yeah, let me know what you think about this. I'm not sure I could do it, it's just something I'm considering. Uh, anyway, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching again, and make sure to check the description for the full playlist of all my Hearts of Iron 4 challenges, as well as the Patreon link if you'd like to support the channel. Goodbye!